Hello, everybody. Clap your hands. Oh, you're looking good. <laughs> Everyone, what's up? Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler, with another What Sold on eBay today. Hope everyone is having an amazing, an amazing, an amazing, an amazing, amazing weekend. We actually had some pretty good sales, so this is actually going to be a lengthy video. Once again, I'm Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler, the eBay Hub Manager for the American Cancer Society. 100% uh, of the proceeds from our shop goes to helping find the cure for cancer. And we actually do a lot of really cool stuff, uh, you know, rides for people to go to checkups and screenings and doctor visits. Also, there's a, there's plenty of places where we do housing. There's a, it's actually, it's actually really cool. And uh, for those that don't know, uh, that's what I'm doing full time now as an employee for the American Cancer Society. So all the items shown today are going to be donated items. So that's why a lot of you have been asking, well, how much did you pay for it? All these items have been donated and sourced by our professionals in the business. Once again, I'm Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. Definitely go down there, click the subscribe button and click the like button. Yay, click the like button. That really helps. And uh, join the chat, join the chat, join the chat. If you're watching this on the back end, leave any comment below. Just leave any comment below. That helps the algorithm out. And I'm trying to find the chat room here. I knew I had a chat thing here somewhere. Oh, there it is. All right, here we go. Yes, we got Landshark Picker, Aaron Kludge, and Deals in the house. We got Gina Joseph. This is going to be a long one, guys. There's a lot of sales. We actually had three thousand dollars worth of sales uh this week and i thought like i would do a show tonight on sunday i usually don't do sunday shows and uh, i thought i would do a show tonight just to get it over with because this week is actually going to be super busy with a bunch of stuff going on so i thought might as well crank out this video now because we actually sold a bunch of stuff this week and we're going to get into it and for those who don't know we're going to go over definitely all the different things that were sold and maybe you'll learn a little something maybe you can teach me something and if you're in the chat room definitely let me know what's going on we got nh guy in the house welcome everyone click the like button just start smashing that like button click it click it click it and we're going to get it right into it i think we've given i guess i've given a lot of pre-roll so let's get into it i know you guys i get a lot of comments actually on youtube where people are saying like just shut up and tell me what's going on i don't want to hear your story just tell me the information you can just click the times two button and fast forward through all the bull stuff and get to what you want to know so we're going to get into it right now Yes, yes, yes. Let's get into it right now. Uh, I know I was, I, I'm already lost here. Okay, first up, we have this Canon AE-1 program. This is a 1984 Olympics model, as you can see here. It has the, uh, the basically the lens cap that says official 35 millimeter camera. When I first saw this, uh, this was actually something that I sourced uh, in the shop, and I thought that this was actually a special camera because I've seen this camera sell for uh i think it was like 400 dollars or something like that so i thought these were special to find out that they really weren't that special i don't know why that other camera sold for uh, an extreme amount of money but it was the only one that was there and now i've seen tons of these pop up so i think what might have happened was someone saw that you know one of these sold for 400 dollars, and then everyone pulled these out so i for 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 the for, uh, for the little, 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 i can't even talk today I first thought this is actually a really rare camera to find out it really wasn't that rare. I guess anyone can take this lens cap and put it on any AE-1 program, but these are special uh, edition cameras that came out uh, in the 80s for the 84 Olympic. I'm not exactly sure how many of these were made, but uh, AE-1 program cameras, 35 millimeters, these aren't digital. These are take the film, and for those old school people like myself, we know what that is. They made a bunch of these. Like a mint condition one can go anywhere between, uh, you know, seventy five to one hundred and fifty dollars, depending on you know what accessories and lenses, because there are different types of lenses. And uh, I think this FD fifty millimeter was the kit lens that came with this camera, and uh, we can there could be whole 
volumes of videos that could be made on cameras and lenses and things like that, but I won't bore you. Uh, I have my list here. Let me make sure that I have my list here functioning somewhere here. Uh, we did take a best offer for $72 on this. I had this thing as high as like, I had this thing as high as like, uh, how long, how high did I have this? I think I had this thing for as high as like $800 at one point because I thought it was one of those rare ones, but it really wasn't. So uh, look out for this. It's a Bolo. There's a lot of uh, 35 millimeter cameras that aren't really worth much. Um, you get excited when you see the word Canon or Nikon or something like that, but there's a lot of 35 millimeter cameras that aren't really worth much. So definitely look up the, the models. Usually model numbers will be on the faces right here. Uh, sometimes they're on the back. And if you want to ever look up a lens, there is uh, the, the name of the company. And you also want to look up the millimeter and the focal length. And that'll usually tell you, those three items will usually tell you what something's worth. Sometimes you can buy a camera, a 35 millimeter camera that's worth worthless. And then the lens is worth like $100. That's happened to me dozens of times over the years. So uh, definitely look out for that. And I got all my windows. I got all my windows and things all messed up here. Uh, next up, we have the scrapped jewelry lot. What I do, uh, what I've done for the last uh, couple of months, was just kind of put away the scrap jewelry that we get, and then we bunch it all up. And uh, we had a pretty good amount, so I decided, well, I'm just probably gonna sell the scrap. So this was 10k scrap. I use the scratch uh, acid testing method. And for those that don't know, you can just actually look that up on. Uh, I could actually tell you really quick. Uh, we have some time, right? Do we have time? I think we have some time. Uh, basically, you scratch it on a little pad and you drop acid uh, for different strengths and it can tell you whether or not it's 10K, uh, 14K, 18K, 24K, or if it's junk. If it starts bubbling up green, you know, <laughs> that's a pro tip. If it's bubbling up green, it's not gold. It's not gold if it's bubbling up that green. Uh, but anyways, um, let's see how much we got for this lot. This was 18.8 grams. This one sold for, doo -doo 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 -doo. man, I don't, oh, because there was a guy that bought two of these. Let me see if I can actually go back to the sales record here. So 18.8 grams sold for $285. We took a best offer. I think spot on this was like three, like the lower threes. So, you know, uh, this guy got a semi-decent deal. I mean, we could have held up for, you know, weeks before we got exactly the price of it for what it is. But scrap, usually when I when I list scrap, there's literally tons of best offers literally five minutes after I list it. So uh, pro tip, you know, I, you, you, not, you might not find scrap all the time, but, you know, if you find little bits here and there, it's, it's pretty good to uh, definitely... Put it to the side and then once you have like, you know, six months worth or three months worth or whatever you do uh, to lot it up and do it like that. And then, you know, you can sell it like that because a lot of people like to melt this stuff down. They like to take the stones out and, and repurpose that and they sell that differently. So there's that. Uh, next up, we have this Roski. I think it's Habich, Habi, Habishit, Hab <laughs> Habishit, Habishit. <laughs> it's a Swarovski. <laughs> It's a Swarovski have a shit binoculars. Oh man, it's already this is like the third item I'm already losing it. It's a 10 by 40 binoculars. Uh, this is actually a really great sale. Um, I think we took actually a best offer for this. Let me see how much this went for. This is actually one of the highest uh, price things we sold. Uh, Four hundred and twenty five dollars. I wish eBay actually would show. Uh, what the actual price is when you're doing these. That would actually save me a lot of time. Uh, so four hundred and $25 we took a best offer for this this morning uh, binoculars are actually pretty easy to test and to look at you know you can tell if they're scratch cracked if they're missing stuff if they're working and so uh, there's a Modesto shop shoot shout out to Paula this was actually a very nice sale uh, and you can basically uh, binoculars will basically say on the usually um, in the front by where let me see if I can actually see it on here they don't actually show it so the binoculars, when you look into the binoculars in the eyepieces right there in the front uh, piece of metal is usually where you're going to find the the item number or wherever that's going to be for the specific things. And, you know, uh, don't get excited because the thing is, I used to get excited every time I'd see binoculars, but there's a lot of binoculars that are that aren't worth much, like ten dollars. But there's some of these ones. 
uh, like uh, Carl Zeiss lenses and things like that. Some of those, like even vintage ones from World War II. There's even World War I binoculars, if you can find those. There's a lot of that uh, old war, war stuff that's actually worth a lot of money. And uh, just like I said, they put it, they make it easy for you where they can put up, they put like the basically the model number and the focal length. And so it's very easy to, to do research on these. I have, though, over the years of being a reseller, I've have found a handful of binoculars that actually took a pretty good amount of research to figure out uh, what they were because they weren't uh, entirely clear uh, what they were <laughs> entirely clear. That's a pun. That's funny. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Uh, okay, let's go. Let's move on. This is actually a really good sell. Uh, next up, we have 14K scrap. So let's, uh, we, we did the, the other scrap and now this scrap. Uh, I want to say we took a best offer for 195 for this. This was 9.5 uh, grams of 14K scrap. Also call this as a, you know, the scratch test. Just be very careful uh, to go through all your stuff as far as like knowing exactly what it is. Because there's also gold filled and that could be tricky every once in a while to try to figure out what gold filled is and everything. But usually I do the magnet test. And uh, and what, for those that don't know, the magnet test is, is gold and silver is not magnetic. So it's not going to stick to a high powered earth magnet. So when you have one of those, that's usually the very first test I do before I do any chemical test. Uh, that easily separates pretty much everything uh, from you know, the gold and stuff like that, that's really easy, easily found. And I have a bunch of windows open and that's really getting me. So yeah, that was another, so we separated 10 K. I, I have seen sellers that'll actually lot like the 10 K and the, and the 14 K together in a huge pile. And I don't understand why they do that, but people do that. I think it's just kind of like a trick of the eye seeing like, Oh, you know, this is 14 K, you know, they may, you know, it might be a pile of 10 K with like a couple pieces of 14 K. I don't know how they how that works, but that's what they do. So uh, actually, this is actually a really good sale. I went to a guy. Uh, these two lots went to a guy in, I want to say, in New York. So um, I don't mean to, like, say anything bad about anyone in New York. And I'm going to knock on wood about this sale. Um, I found, like, the most scammers are in New York for some reason. And uh, that's 20 years, 20 plus years of doing eBay. Uh, it seems like, you know, if you're sending something high end to New York, uh, and especially if it's an apartment, do a signature confirmation and even insurance if you can afford it, if it's something that's higher end, because there's something about New York that, you know, there's like a black hole of, it's like the Brazil. And that's another thing. I don't ship to Brazil ever. That I learned that in the 90s. Uh, Brazil's another black hole for <laughs> for uh, your stuff like disappearing into the thin air. Uh, next up, we have these uh, diamond and emerald pendants. This is actually a really nice piece of jewelry. These are two earrings. And of course, uh, for those that are wondering how I get this kind of uh, zoom in feature, I actually use a jeweler's loop and my iPhone. Uh, I normally take photos. Uh, did I have any photos? So this is a photo with a digital SLR. I think this was actually one with digital SLR. Did I do two of them on this one? Because sometimes I'll actually switch it up with the digital SLR and the, and the iPhone. No, I think this is all iPhone, but you just take a jeweler's loop and you can put it over the iPhone. And then you can actually take these really close up photos. And if someone has like a magnifying glass or a nicer jeweler loop and a nice iPhone, you can really take great photos, really great close up photos uh, with that with that trick. And uh, let me see exactly the price we got for these. We took a best offer for one hundred and ten dollars and these shipped out right away for sure. And uh, we sold actually a lot of jewelry. Uh, this week so that's actually really really cool so i really appreciate that um definitely for sure so if you guys are new watching the show uh definitely say what's up click the thumbs up uh let me know you're alive there in the chat room make sure you guys are, are awake here uh micro see uh oxford says uh, micro lens dso does super on these types of images yeah exactly exactly uh, you can definitely swap out a micro lens if you got one of those uh, there's there's a million ways to to take photos uh, to each their own most definitely for sure so that was actually a pretty good sale like i said we sold a ton of jewelry this week i don't know what it was uh silver here's another uh caldwell sterling silver spoon this is actually very i was actually impressed by the craftsmanship in these old vintage spoons uh, this one was a J.E. Calling and Company, as you can see here. We actually used the jeweler's loop again for this uh, photo. 
And I, I started to do the all of our gold and jewelry with this kind of black felt background. It really helps the the items pop. And I love the the tree roots here. Like where you know the 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 original engraver or the mold maker. I don't know if this was actually you know made with a clay. Uh, sample at first and then molded and I'm pretty sure that's probably what happened but it's actually a fantastic piece and uh, we had this listed for $59.99 let me tell you the exact price this actually sold at uh, we took a best offer ah, actually actually this sold for $59.99 the exact price that it was offered for this actually sold probably the first hour after it was listed it was an amazing piece and similar items have sold around $50 so you know we did price it up a little bit and of course you know i have my photo with the weight if you're doing any kind of jewelry or any kind of bullion i highly suggest and we've said this a million times before highly suggest putting this on a weight scale just to show uh, and just mention it because either even though things are sometimes fashion jewelry as far as like the people aren't going to melt it down i always think it's good to put anyways a a thing like that for sure and we got a message retracted. I didn't even get to see that here. Uh, let's see here. Auction professor saying a filter kit for most standards about ten dollars for the lens set. It has the same magnifications as a jeweler loop. Okay, that's cool. I'll actually take a look at that for sure. Uh, Do South Candle Company. I have some dolls and teddy bears from Storage Locker. I'm having a hard time finding a price for. Uh, yeah, I mean, if they have touch tags or anything like that, um, you can definitely look it up. Uh, you said you even tried Google Pictures, the reverse images. Yeah, it's one of those things where, you know, for me, I don't know everything about bears and dolls, but I've been around for the most part. If you uh, do South Candle, for the dolls, look behind the neck. That's usually where the, the marks are. Uh, the, like right behind the neck is uh, the most common place for the marks. Uh, if there's no marks there, you might want to try because usually the the torso is like a stuffed kind of thing, so usually not there. But definitely look behind there for sure. Uh, next up, we have this. Uh, what is this? A bridge and a train and smoke. <laughs> I put all these weird like uh, titles in this thing. It was actually a postcard. Uh, we got in a huge collection of postcards, and I separated the real. Uh, postcards we got Don the auction professor in the house he's very familiar with this kind of stuff I listed all of these at $74.99 and just to see where what would happen and uh, believe it or not we did sell a few of them at that price so it was a good thing that I did because uh, to be honest like real postcards they literally made like you know literally thousands if not millions of them over the years and you know some of them have you know are, are rare enough where you don't know what's going to be worth something so i i always highly suggest to, to price them high if you could do it and and then you can always you know throttle back the price down uh you can also try i think don was saying a uh, hip postcards is a good place to actually look for like real kind of standard pricing and of course uh watchcount.com i think watchcount.com goes back nine months or a year i think and you can actually do some research with that but uh postcards i, I literally just got into postcards maybe over the last year uh, it's funny that don's been talking about them because it was like you know maybe like five or six months ago that i was really watching like a ton of uh, postcard videos and, and there's a there's one postcard guy and i wish i remember his name who's on youtube that his youtube channel is just dedicated to uh postcards and i've learned a, a, a lot from from that guy for sure so uh this one sold for 74.99 uh we ship these in uh we have uh top loaders that are for for um uh for postcards so these things ship very easily uh, postcards are, are definitely one of those kind of things that everyone's starting to finally figure out uh like i said for myself i finally figured these out you know over the last year that you know i've passed these up so many times over the years and i actually regret uh definitely doing that for sure uh, don says he sold a single card in december for 425 dollars uh yeah for sure for sure for sure uh, Don says if it has a train on a bridge, we price them at $125 with a buy it now. Yeah, we've actually, uh, we actually had this relisted like five times before it sold for $74.99. So, um, it's one of those things where you got to find the right buyer at the right time for some of these things. You can have this thing priced at $500 and someone might buy it. Uh, it just takes the right buyer. 
Uh, next up, we have the Civil War pins. Uh, these are actually very interesting to research. Uh, when I first saw these, I didn't really think they were uh, Civil War till I actually did some research. This one with the flag, unfortunately, there is another lower. There's another lower part to this, so I wish this was actually complete. And uh, this is actually called a ladder badge. Uh, ladder being the way that it's constructed right here. There is other Civil War ones that are that are more intricate. As a matter of fact, this is a very basic one from any of the ones I've seen. And so uh, this is stamped 11th Indiana, and it was really great doing research on this. It, that's what's one of the probably my favorite things about being a reseller is doing historical research on stuff you find because you learn so much like incredible amount of information just from a piece like this. How much information I learned uh, about Civil War and about this Indian uh, Indiana, excuse me, uh, infantry and the Company B and like all the teenagers and you know like it was like a crazy story about. You know how you know once the the company was disbanded it's actually really cool to le to learn kind of stuff like this uh, we put this on an auction this sold for a hundred and fourteen dollars with three bids and uh, it came in a frame like this this is what the back of the frame was I actually was gonna take it apart to like kind of look to see if there was any kind of stuff on the back of these uh, but we left it alone because it was it was pretty much like this this frame was put together like it did it did not want to ever come out of this thing so uh, we kind of left it as is. It's kind of crazy some of the stuff that uh, uh, people people donate. You know, like it's it's actually really crazy some of the stuff people donate. Uh, when I first saw this, I thought, oh, you know, maybe there were replicas. But when I took a closer look and did my research, uh, uh, we sold some of that for sure. Uh, next up, we have this vintage 1880s. This is a crab wall plate. And a huge shout out to... Paula, this is one of Paula's listings, and uh, these are just funky, funky, funky things. And uh, you know, I remember you know seeing these in older folks' homes when I was younger, and it's just one of those things where it was a kind of a style back then. People kind of enjoyed this kind of stuff. To me, it's kind of freaky and weird now. Uh, this sold for a hundred and thirty-five dollars, and uh, you know the wall plates. Especially stuff like this, it's very, it's very odd and very, very strange to me. But people still collect this kind of stuff, and I'm sure there's some of this. Uh, it's just so, looks so, it just looks so weird. Uh, anyways, uh, this is actually a really cool piece, and this sold for $135 on bidding. Uh, next up, we have this Expresso, Expresso machine. Man, I got a, I got a mouthful there. Now I could have went through the whole nine yards of testing this stuff, but we get in so much stuff that I just did. I didn't have the time to kind of go through this and make sure that it worked. If someone donated uh, like this nice espresso machine, I think they go for like four or $500 brand new. Um, you know, our, an average reseller, I can understand if you had the time to test this, but we didn't have the time to test this. So we sold this as parts and uh, this sold for $99 plus $29.99 shipping. Uh, this will go via uh, UPS and this is one of the things for sure that we're going to have to ship out tomorrow uh, first thing for sure and uh, you know the the accessories these these I don't know what you would even call these things I'm not really a, a huge coffee drinker I know this is the stuff you put the the coffee grinds in and you press it and then you you, you kind of latch it on there uh, this thing alone these three things alone could have sold for uh, like 60 or 70 dollars so it's another case for parting out stuff. Uh, we talked about this literally hundreds of times before in the past about parting out stuff. Uh, one could have sold the unit by itself for like a hundred dollars, and uh, especially if you tested it and it worked fine, you know that's another thing. And then one could have sold the parts for another fifty. You know you could have made, you know you could have squeezed, you know some some money out of this if that was you know what you did because you know parts even if you wanted to take the drawer out and do all kinds of weird stuff like that. Uh, and that's another use case for uh, Goodwill and thrift shops and garage sales is, you know, like Cuisinart machines. And I, I don't know if Don has any experience with parting out uh, stuff like this, but, you know, uh, you can definitely part out stuff and sell the little pieces and make maybe three or four times uh, the amount of money for sure. Uh, next up, we have this woman's uh, jade ring. This was a size seven point something. I see that's actually a really blurry photo. That's not really a great photo. 
I'm still, this is actually one of the photos I took when I first started uh, doing jewelry, I think. Of course, I have, uh, oh, yeah, it was an older one because I don't even do this anymore. I, I, I would do the photos of actually the ring size. Uh, so on top of, like, having a weight, uh, uh, basically a weight picture, I also had a ring size uh, thing. So I definitely highly suggest uh, two items if you don't have them in your arsenal is a, a gram scale. Uh, you can get these for, like, $20 or less. And one of these ring sizer things that you can see exactly what size a ring is. And these are like 10 bucks. Uh, you can get a really good one for like 10 bucks. So uh, how much did we sell this one for? I actually got to go to the list for this. Where did you go? We took a best offer for $85 on this one for sure. So this is, uh, we, like I said, we, told a, we sold a ton of jewelry. And to like all different people, which was actually very surprising. Uh, usually there's some people that come in and they go through our shop and they just literally send us best offers for all the jewelry and it's usually one person but this time you know we did sell a pretty good amount of stuff to different people uh next up we also have uh, uh another gold ring and i want to say it's malachite i think that's how you say it I don't, I don't know maybe it's maybe it's pronounced differently uh, this was another ring size six and you can see here this was an older photo because i don't even do photos of uh, the the ring size stick anymore but uh this sold and i want to say how much did we sell this for do, 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 do. this sold for we took a best offer for 80 dollars on this one 80 dollars on this one and uh, like i said we sold a ton of jewelry uh next up is a waterford crystal this is a footed bowl 10 inch in diameter and uh for those that don't know, it's kind. Of, if Waterford doesn't have a sticker on it, it's kind of really hard to tell what it is. Uh, Waterford has this very specific cut in it, and uh, we've talked about crystal before, and they have tons of glass and Goodwills, and I can't tell you how many times I've pulled high quality glass out of Goodwill because a lot of people don't look for it. They think glass is just glass. But uh, some of the pro tips I can tell you when determining high quality crystal is the flick. You'll hear this beautiful like ringing, the singing. It's like I can't even describe it. You flick it, it makes this beautiful like kind of, it just sings to you. I can't even describe it. Uh, but also the way the light hits it, if it looks like like holographic, I can't even describe it. It's almost like the like a prism. If it can reflect light, like brilliantly it, those are all the different types of things you know that be like if you don't see it's marked because a lot of high quality glass isn't marked a few of them are actually etched they usually come with stickers that usually if it's a vintage one it'll fall off over the years uh but definitely um look at that and for so and so uh, how much did we sell this one for this is actually a beautiful piece we get actually in a ton of high-end glass and uh I've been, one of the things that I was doing this year was to research a lot of glass because it's one of the weaknesses I have as far as like, you know, I know a ton about collectibles. I know like a lot about collectibles. I don't know much about glass. Pottery is what I got into. Jewelry is what I got into this this year as far as really studying, buying books, uh, reading up on, you know, a hallmarks and what to look for and just watching a ton of videos also on on different subjects. Uh, we actually took a best offer for $70 on this one. And uh, as a pro tip, like I said, study up on glass. I've, I've found a ton of glass at Goodwill. Uh, a ton of, I, I should start calling it glass. I call it, it's crystal. It's like high-end crystal. I always use glass in the title just because there's a lot of people that search glass. There's a lot of people that search crystal. And so uh, just look out for this kind of thing. And uh, like I said, you're going to have to do, you're going to have to know your stuff to actually understand if it's a waterford or if it's like a cheap thing or if it's good if it's bad crystal's a crazy genre to get into glasses and people a lot of people don't actually like to ship glass too i was the same way a lot but uh we figured out over the years lots of great methods to cut down the damage that can possibly be done shipping glass so it's one of the things that's the more the merrier we talked about uh, packing peanuts in the past that you know, we use packing peanuts for uh, all the glass that we sell because of the the way that it that it that it gives. You never want glass to shake in a box, but you want peanuts in there that don't shake, and that so that 
you know, just the way they're set up, the atomic structure helps uh, cushion in case that stuff's ever dropped. And so, yeah, I can, like I said, I can go into like a, a a whole video series on shipping glass. But I won't. That's boring. That's boring to me. Who wants to see that? Uh, next up, we have this Franklin Mint Treasure Island book. We've talked about this stuff in the past. Uh, you find tons of this stuff at garage sales and yard sales. These Franklin Mint books, this is what they look like inside. Uh, do I have another great photo of what it looks like inside? This was actually uh, printed in 1975 by Franklin Mint. If you don't, if you're not familiar with Franklin Mint, it's a really high-end kind of. Uh, or actually, used to be a, a Franklin Mint stuff has gone down in value over the last 15 years. Uh, we used to we used to sell the the cars, and and you you were not allowed to sell the the, the diecast cars online in our in the hobby shop that we worked at. It was one of the rules, and just Franklin Mint stuff has has gone down dramatically in price, but. Uh, if you see the word Franklin Mint, usually it's it's pretty high quality stuff. If you can get it for cheap, uh, like I said, if you, can, you sometimes you might be able to find these books for twenty five cents, fifty cents. Definitely pick them up if they're in good condition. Uh, how much did we sell this one for? This one sold for where did you go, book? Where did you go? Of course you ran off on me. We sold this for twenty five dollars. Uh, we've sold Franklin Mint. Uh, collection books all day long between ten to fifty dollars. So this is one of those bolo items to definitely look out for, especially Franklin Mint books. They're in very nice bindings. They stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, not to mention they say frickin' Franklin Mint Library on the side. You can't really go wrong with these, uh, especially if you can gather a whole collection of these and sell them in a set. You know that's definitely a way to go. Uh, next up we have the Sega Game Gear. Uh, thing right here. This is a Game Gear set. We actually tried to test this. It didn't work. Uh, for those that are that are in the gaming stuff, like I've been in for, geez, 30, 50 million years, um, Sega Game Gear. For those that don't know, it has a their motherboards go out with the. There's like a soldering connection that goes to the screen. And if you if you ever test a, a Game Gear and you get these crazy lines. That's usually what it means, and there's people that actually repair this kind of stuff, and they they sell kits on eBay uh, for you to do repairs on these. But for me, it's not even worth it. Uh, the time that it takes to uh, go diagnose what's wrong with this with the Game Gear, put it together, you're gonna get like a hundred dollars maybe for it if it's in mint condition with games and the the equipment. It's not worth it. But there's a lot of gamer enthusiasts that love to kind of do this kind of stuff. Uh, I watched a video of a guy who did a replacement screen on one of these. He spent like five hours uh, figuring out what was wrong, got the right pieces, put it all together, and then it didn't work because it was, there was something else wrong with it. So I was just like, <laughs> geez, uh, we've all been there, done that, throwing our time away in the garbage can. Uh, that's just no fun. But anyways, uh, this actually sold for $13.50 plus $19.99 shipping. This shipped actually very nice in a medium flat rate box. And so, you know, you know, the this is another thing, too. I mean, we could have parted out the accessories and stuff like this, but uh, we're trying to just move this stuff as fast as possible. Um, and so someone got a good deal. I'm sure someone's going to fix it or either just use the car charger or the other kind of battery pack thing for something and maybe sell the rest. So, you know, that's that's what happens. That's what it is for sure. Uh, if you guys are liking the show, definitely click the like button. That helps the algorithm out. Uh, next up, we have another. This is actually Tiffany and Company. Uh, Peretti Spain heart-shaped sterling piece. Uh, what's also nice about Tiffany and Company is a lot of this stuff is is pretty much hallmarked and branded, so it's pretty easy to find uh, what it is. And so uh, there are Tiffany fakes out there. Um, I've never came across one in in the entire time that I've done stuff, but I know they're out there. So just be careful. To look for uh, match up, match it up against things that are known to have sold. Uh, there are tons of one of a kind Tiffany and Company pieces, and we see those on the on the Antiques Roadshow. And by the way, if you're not watching Antiques Roadshow, it's uh, and if you're not familiar with that show, that's like one of the things I love to watch. You can find out so much information about stuff just by watching that show. You're probably never gonna come across that kind of stuff, but. I will say that there are been things that I've looked twice at because I've seen similar items to on the on the Antique Roadshow and and those items have actually been very well. Uh, I think I found some Weller Weller pottery 
uh, many years ago. And if it wasn't for the Antique Roadshow, I would have never known uh, to look for that stuff. But anyways, uh, what did this sell for? This Tiffany silver necklace, we took a best offer for $40. So uh, Tiffany and company, silver, sterling's always very well. Um, I would say the weakest Tiffany and company things are glass. Uh, glass isn't really moving that fast when it comes to Tiffany and company. Uh, Tiffany and company, silver and jewels and gold sells very fast and very well. Uh, just, you know, be warned about the glass. You'll probably be sitting on the glass for a while. Uh, next up, we have this Johnson Speed X Telegraph key. Uh, this was straight out of Northridge. This is a, a, a great piece. I think this is actually probably constructed sometimes in the 40s or the 50s. It wasn't a, a super high-end one. If you guys actually want to do some telegraph research, just put in telegraph in eBay and search by highest price and then scroll all the way down. You'll see like what some of the higher one end goes for. There's, a, there's even like crazy like gold-plated ones. There's a lot of crazy ones, but... Um, we took a best offer for this one for uh, $19. We just wanted to, we just wanted to kind of move this along. Uh, we've I've seen mint condition ones of these of this particular exact one uh, sell for about you know $60. So you know that was one of the things to kind of uh, look out for telegraph pieces. Not a lot of them aren't worth uh, for sure. And uh, deals is in the house. She says great tip on antique roadshow. Yeah, you know what's funny is. Uh, I'll, I'll binge watch Antiques Roadshow and I'll put it at times two on, on YouTube. So it's like going super fast, like through the whole show. And like, just like, I feel like a, a robot, just like the, the information just going into my, going into, going into my brain. Oh man, I love it. So uh, yeah, that was that. Uh, next up we have these Horse Rider Steeplechase Equestrian Bone China Napkins. Uh, napkin ring holder things these are actually really cool uh these are actually kind of interesting to ship because the tails we didn't want the tails to break do i have a hot do i have i don't have a clear photo of the tails i guess that's the closest thing we can see right here the tails can break very easily in shipping so we made sure that uh, i put a little bit of bubble wrap in between the tail and the leg and then uh, a layer of bubble wrap around it. And then we enclosed them in cardboard. We cut up some cardboard and I folded it around so that when these things would break, there would be no way that the tails would get bumped in shipping. So like I said, a lot of people are very careless with shipping glass. I've learned that as being a manager for uh, the American Cancer Society, uh, you know, trying to re-educate the employees on the, the proper uh, best practices for shipping glass. Uh, so, you know, just be very careful. It's, you know, for the thing is I would avoid glass like the plague. Now I find it a challenge to, you know, make sure that something is shipped in as good as condition as, as the person gets it. So um, I want to say we took a best offer for, yes, we took a best offer for $35. I know it was somewhere around there. Uh, these are kind of funky, you know, there's lots of people that are into equestrian type things and definitely if you have if you sell anything that says that's horse equestrian is definitely one of the the keywords you want to put in there you know horse and equestrian is one of those things because you got a lot of people that are into that kind of stuff i couldn't spell that word equestrian if you if i was paid a million dollars that's true i can't even spell most i can't even spell most words <laughs> oh my god think they, they you know what's funny is i think spell check has made made my life worse as far as like you know like i don't care anymore if like i don't know how to spell it i'll just use spell check uh next up is los angeles dodgers this is actually uh pitcher cards 20 20 pitcher cards we sold we sold these in the past we're in uh we're in just outside of los angeles so we see a lot of dodger stuff and and i'm sure if you're in other parts of the state or in other parts of the country you know that you find you know your baseball team a lot of that stuff jerseys and t-shirts and stuff uh but anyways the the odd thing about this is it actually came with some postcards <clears throat> these Dodger postcards and uh, I did some research on baseball uh, postcards uh, when I saw this and there's actually a lot of money in baseball postcards so that's just another pro tip another bolo thing to look out for is postcards with baseball people baseball themed uh, usually the older the better the money that's where the money's at but I have seen some 60s and 70s Dodgers postcards with like Sandy Koufax and Don Drysdale and all those classic pictures. Uh, some of those actually went for a pretty good amount of money just by uh, the postcards themselves. And those are kind of like new age postcards, I guess I would say. 
Um, we did take a best offer for this one at fourteen ninety nine. The shipped very the shipped locally. Obviously, you know, someone in local like wanted to buy this as Dodgers and all that fun stuff uh, for sure. Uh, next up, we have another another one of those funky another one of those funky plates with the fish and the weird fish and the coral and the weird thing from the thing and the vintage and the clams and the creepy grandma things that you know this would be something my grandma Avalos would have in her house for sure. Uh, but anyways, this is a plate by Alvario Jose Cal Caldas. Da blah, blah, blah. I can't even, I, man, I don't even know. I'm, I give up. Anyways, this sold for $45, another one of those plates. Uh, I've never seen these in person. I know that I know about them. Uh, I don't know what the story is with the plates like this. If it was, this was like something that was, you know, something that like people love to collect, you know, in the early uh, 1900s or, you know, even mid-century. But whatever i'm done with these let's move on oh uh, this is actually really cool uh, next up is this 1960s diamond paper coke bottle uh what's awesome about this was it was an actual label from the 60s that actually survived these years even though we can see some discolorization uh when you see this kind of uh discolorization it's usually like a moisture uh, a moisture thing so this thing got wet at some point and when it you know the process of it drying uh, different elements including the ink pigments leached on out uh, it could have been uh, also something that it was stored in there could have been the coca-cola stuff that was uh, poured on it you know but anyways what i really like about this coke bottle is it survived all these years uh, with the label still attached um oh that actually what seeing these backside actually reminds me like it could possibly be the the glue the gum that uses you know that they use on the backs of these things um you know what happens is if there's moisture it leaches into the paper and stuff like that but this is actually a really cool bottle piece uh this was actually something i pulled out of a thrift store that i was in uh when when i was visiting i do visits to some of our shops you know uh, meeting all the managers and meeting all the employees and kind of teaching them you know what kind of things to look for <clears throat> and things like that and i remember pulling this off the shelf uh, i think they wanted like five bucks for this on the shelf of course i pulled it <clears throat> of course i pulled it uh how much did we sell this one for this i want to say this sold for like 40 bucks yeah this sold for 40 dollars and so just you know not all coca-cola bottles are going to be worth money but if you can find the older ones with the labels on them especially uh definitely pick them up uh next up we have the starbucks coffee mug this is a collector series out of uh alaska this is a huge bolo brand by the way um, not all Starbucks states cups are going to be worth a lot. Uh, you can, if you can find the jumbo ones, I've never seen a jumbo one in the wild though. They're these huge mugs. Uh, those actually go for a pretty good amount of money. There's very obscure like countries and things like that. that actually go for a good amount of money. Uh, I've found Disneyland ones in the wild cause we're here local in Southern California. You can find Disney ones uh, every once in a while. There's some Disney sets that actually go for a pretty good amount of money. Uh, but you know, the, the key is, uh, I would pick up any, any, any Starbucks states or country mugs that are in mint condition, especially if the price is right. Uh, you know, you might get 10 or $12 for, for one of the weak ones, but, uh, some of the crazy hard, the fine ones can go for up to $200 or more. So this is another Bolo thing for sure to definitely look out for. Uh, next up, we have this Louis Vuitton monogram cherry red button wallet. This was kind of had some a little bit of wear to it. And, uh, you know, this was something that was fairly easy to authenticate. Um, the pressing, you know, looked really good. The hardware looked good. The stitching was immaculate. And we've talked about how to authenticate pieces of clothing and, and items like this before in the past. But I'll talk about it again because I feel like it. Um, the first thing I look at is the stitching. If the stitching's off, I move, I don't move on. I realize that authentic stuff on higher end brands, the stitching is going to be perfect. Um, you can have a little this and that maybe in something, but for the most part, 99% of the stitching is going to be immaculate. It's going to be perfect. It's going to look very well. Um, this, you know, the seams are going to look great. The monograms are going to look great. So this is not that hard to authenticate. And so uh, we took a best offer for $30 on this for sure. 
Uh, once again, I'm Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. We had a lot of great guests. Uh, guests? <laughs> you guys are my guests. Welcome. Uh, you, we had a lot of great chatters in the room. I want to appreciate everyone. Don, the auction professor, stopped by. We got Trista, Recreates. We got Deals in the house. And uh, we got a lot of great people. We got Steven. Was it Steven Rose Resell? A lot of you guys. So definitely click the like button. If you're not, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. What are you waiting for? You know you want to. Click the bell for notifications. Uh, I really appreciate you guys' support, uh, for especially those that have stuck through this whole show. <laughs> uh, I love you all. Hope you guys have a great week and great sales and happy Sunday to you. And we'll see you next time. Take care.